Hi everybody, I hope everyone's doing well. This video I will be rounding up my most outstanding beauty products of 2017. So if you guys are interested, do stick around. So these products are just top of mind the products that I reached for the most. Some of them were new launches in 2017 and others are just been around for a while or not necessarily a new launch but definitely still made a mark in the products that really stood out for me. So I'm going to begin with the complexion products that stood out for me and my favorite product of course when it comes to makeup is foundation products or complexion products. So if it's a standout for me it definitely says a lot because I do try and buy almost every new launch that seems interesting. So for the two foundations I have a luxury or prestige brand and I also have one drugstore brand. So I didn't really make it a point to have one a drugstore or a luxury per category. It just really is very random in terms of what stood out for me. So some are all just luxury depending on the category and then there are some categories where there are some drugstore brands that stood out as well. For the prestige or the luxury I have two ties and it's the it's from Dior and YSL. This is the Dior Forever, Dior Forever foundation and then this was released earlier and then latter part um, YSL released the all hours foundation and essentially they are the same in terms of finish and performance they're both marketed as long wear foundations medium coverage I tremendously love them both in the beginning I of the year I was using Dior skin forever religiously and then when this came out towards the latter since its release I have been using this religiously for about three or four months and if you are a fan of medium coverage buildable to full and you're not really I'm combination skin but I don't love a full coverage on my skin for wearing like daily wear I mean for a shoot obviously and then after an hour or so you remove it but for comfort for me daily wear the most I can do is medium coverage and these are amazing now for the drugstore this is I mean this is the only I think in so long I haven't loved a drugstore foundation and this one I actually bought and with backups and multiple shades because sometimes because of the changing season I get too pale or too dark so this is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow and my shade really right now is 203 during the summer I was 204 then it became orangey and then winter sometimes I even had to go 202 and I do have backups of this what I do is sometimes I mix the shades or I actually mix them in sometimes with some foundations I'm combination skin so I don't really need that much coverage on my cheeks my like medium or full coverage usually I concentrate more on my t-zone and then sometimes on my cheeks I would actually use this and this is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow for primer although I do still love my Dior Dream Skin this was really a surprise to me and this is from The Ordinary and this is the High Spreadability Fluid Primer. This is silicone based. It's a surface smoother and primer. This is how it looks. And basically how I would describe this is essentially it's just a very basic silicone base. No frills, no skincare benefits. It really just smooths and primes the skin. So I mean for the look that I want and really just like a good primer just to you know give me a good canvas I am I have really been enjoying this since I purchased it and that I think I'm almost done with it this is I, I did have a few in my ordinary order but this is the one that I own that really I did reach for on a daily basis for powders I still have my holy grails but this is the one that I will mention as an outstanding one and it's a tremendous shock and surprise as well because I am not a fan of the brand it's just not my 
there's nothing wrong with a brand but I just never really I think it's just okay but this was a surprise this is the Too Faced peach blur powder this is how it looks usually I like the hourglass powders or my Laura Mercier translucent or my Japanese powders um, I tried this when this came out and in Sephora and I remember just seeing how it instantly enhanced and just blurred my skin so this is how it looks and I've been using it on a daily basis since I got it. It doesn't really impart that much pigment, but it really just blurs things out and just perfects the texture of the skin. Now for concealer, I do have a lot of concealers I favorite, but this is the one I'm gonna mention. Um, it's the Clay Depo Concealer. It is my holy grail. And honestly, it just, daily now, this is what I use. And the only reason why this got back into my rotation was that they released the new version with an SPF and the difference is that it has ridges in the packaging if you guys didn't know but actually I still reach for the original one a lot well first of all I still have a long way to go and this you guys is like goes along a little goes a long way um, I think I reach for the original just because there's no SPF though so I'm not afraid of flash um, I've reached for this a little bit but I still like the original I think this is SPF 25 but honestly holy grail concealer this for blemishes or you know spots now I'm gonna move on to powder products well actually I did share one powder product already but this will be um, complexion enhancers blushes bronzers so I'm gonna begin with a palette that I think everyone should have, and it's the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Volume 3. This was launched, I think, around September. This is my favorite ambient um, lighting palette ever. The first one was just okay, but this one has everything you honestly need, and you can even use this in the eyes. So it's absolutely amazing. You have a highlighter, a bronzer, you have a deeper blush, just a rosy blush and then you have my favorite which is which is diffused light and I actually use that still on a daily basis where is my diffused light I just had it I've almost hit pan and diffused light I have it uh, on its own and I love using diffused light just on my brow bone and cheekbone area if I don't want to do a highlight like on a regular day it's a beautiful brightening powder for blushes, there are two that were launched this year. Unfortunately, these are limited edition, so I don't know if you can still get your hands on them, but they really, really, really stood out for me. Um, the first one is by Burberry. This is the blush palette that was released. I think it was called the Pink Collection, and this is how it looks. It had an overfrost of a gold. I'm so sorry, you guys, my lighting, because it, it might be too bright because my my ring light broke so I'm using another smaller light and it's just a bit bright but this is how it looks it has the pattern on the powder like a floral pattern and then it had a, a gold overlay but this is just the most beautiful like rosy cheek look especially for my skin tone if you're like yellow undertone medium shade range um, like a MAC NC30, NC25. This is just gorgeous and almost the entire summer um, veering into fall. I was using this in the apples for my cheeks and then as of late since this was released I think this was with a fall collection of Chanel. This is one of the juice contrast or the Chanel blushes that I have purchased in a very long time. This is called Burnt Coral. It's what I have on my cheeks right now. What I love about this is that in the winter, you don't really want to use bronzer. And <clears throat> this eliminates the need of a bronzer. It's a bronzer slash blush. And those are my favorite complexion products right now. I love mixing them or the Dior Nude Air Glow powders where it's a blush and bronzer in one compact. It just puts the warmth back to your skin and just gives you that very healthy beautiful natural complexion this burnt coral if you can get your hands on them run and get it um, I don't think it's just for a specific skin tone I've seen it in multiple skin tones and it gives the same effect and then for bronzer the one that stood out for me this year is from Burberry as well this is number four summer glow 
I used to use Garlane a lot, but I, I think Garlane pulls a little more orange, so for deep, deep summer, it's good. But this one, I mean, almost all seasons, it fits my skin tone. And then, of course, never will I be without this for cream bronze cream bronzer which I like using during the summer nothing still has or nothing has yet to nothing has yet to beat nothing has beat Soleil Tan de Chanel and I do have a backup this one is the older one but you know what you guys this is over five years this is gonna look gross I'm almost hitting pan but the new one is absolutely gorgeous I did buy one just because I was hitting pan with this and I'll show you but honestly, you guys, it, it's just, it's like sun on your skin instantly. And you know what? Even during the winter, it's just that I don't like fuzzing so much with cream products during winter. It's just too much work. Um, this gives a more natural look than a powder. So during the summers, I don't eat, I reach more for a cream. But even for winter, this does not pull too, <clears throat> too orange or too summer-like, like some bronzer. So it's absolutely holy grail and still outstanding for me the most outstanding eye palettes released this year I'm not gonna do any swatches because I'm sure you've seen this a lot and so this one I have um, I have luxury I have medium range luxury prestige medium range and drugstore level so I'm gonna begin with luxury or prestige there was only one for me I don't have this on right now, but this is absolutely gorgeous. Unfortunately, it was limited edition, but honestly, this is the most beautiful DR palette I own, and it's the from the Precious Rocks collection. This is 857 Ruby. This is how it looks. The design, the emboss, the finish, the way it looks on your eyes, the intensity of the pigment, the ease in application, and just gorgeous absolutely gorgeous wearable for every day but definitely can be a statement I look for night um, I can't say anything more this is I think if I had to choose one holy grail luxury prestige palette just one not even formula or brand like shape color if I could just have one it would be this one and then for mid-range, of course, always, I am a fan, always, 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 the Anastasia of Beverly Hills palettes. Um, the Mario, the Subculture, those palettes released last year, I did reach for on a daily basis. And although these, I, I have not as much, um, I still reach for them a lot. Pigmentation, uniqueness and color scheme, um, pigmentation, pigmentation. I mean, <laughs> with Anastasia, it's pigmentation um they are so gorgeous culture no sorry modern renaissance was last year subculture was released just a little before prism so i didn't know if i wanted to get this but you guys i mean you guys look at this the finishes are so gorgeous they're so unique i'm not gonna swatch them but i've tried them and it's just these are what you call statement pieces they can go with any neutrals if you want to create a look whether it's for a night it's for a specific event a specific gown or a specific shoot then you must have these palettes for drugstore well it's not really drugstore but the level of that I have to give props to the Morphe and the Jaclyn Hill palette for price and range in shades I actually used it today like impromptu because I was lazy to pick up the other ones um, they're just so good for the price the shade range is amazing the finish is good the pigmentation is good obviously you're not going to get the quality of the ease of the Dior or the pigmentation of the Anastasia but for the price that you're paying this for and the color range the the mix of the mattes the shimmers and the metals gorgeous you can do so many looks with this so if you're in a budget and you don't want to buy anastasia or dior then this is definitely a good alternative i ran her up but really not so so much but i thought i would mention it because i think this is the best one ever of all the palettes in this series the urban decay naked palettes have been around forever but the Naked Heat, I think, is the only one that I actually reached for 
a lot and the rest I just kind of purchased to have because it was like you had to have it but this is the only one that I actually reached for the most and out of all the Urban Decay Naked palettes that came out. They're beautiful pigmentation, um, warm tones and all this terracottas and burgundies and browns have really been the trend I think for last year. Um, so after a while it just it's it's just that it's too warm and then you can't really do that much looks with it but definitely um, a good palette still worth mentioning for 2017. So for lips, I'm going to share a few, the, a few of the products that I could not have lived without in 2017. And um, yeah, I'm going to begin with the Holy Grail. I think the Holy Grail lip gloss, number one lip gloss in the world ever, no matter what look you have or you want. It's just a staple that is a necessity. No matter what other lip glosses or lip gloss formulas come out, this is still the one that I will take with me to a deserted island if I can only choose one because it's still that good. And it's the Dior Lip Maximizer Collagen Active. I have like multiples of this, not just because I work for Dior, but because every bag that I have, travel bag, makeup bag, makeup kit, I do have one of this lying around. Um, any lip color, you can use it as a topper. It's gorgeous. There are a lot of toppers and a lot of new formulas and trendy ones that come out. Um, I do try them. I love them for a bit, but I always still go back to this. Lip moisturizer. This is, to me, now my holy grail. And it's not even that expensive, let's say like the La Mer lip moisturizer or lip balm. Um, this is by Eve Lom. It's the Kiss Mixed Lippy. This is how it looks. And I think the shade, they do have a tint to them or shades. I think mine was in bare or nude. This is how it looks. I'm usually not a fan of lip balms that come in pots because I have to dip my fingers in them. And God knows, I'm such a germaphobe, so I have to wash consistently. So I don't carry this around with me in my purse because there's no way in hell that I'm gonna open this pot in the middle of nowhere and with my dirty fingers and just do this. So I actually just apply this before I leave the house. In the beginning of the day while I'm doing my makeup, it absolutely moisturizes my lips without causing it to feather or get weird if I layer lipstick or anything else on top of it. So holy grail. Three holy grail lipstick shades. Neutrals, I have two. One is from Burberry and one is from Bobbi Brown. This is the Burberry Mm-hmm. I don't a Burberry Full Kisses uh, formula. It looks like this. And sorry, it looks really this is what I don't like the boss. It gets really dirty. Um, this is a beautiful nude that doesn't require a primer or a lip balm. Um, I guess these are the only ones I will swatch. This is called English English Rose number 529, and this is how it looks. It looks darker or more pigmented in the back of my hand, but actually when I have it on my lip. And I'm made up. It just looks very natural and beautiful and moisturized. I don't need a lip gloss on top. And usually, I'll put a nude and still always top with lip maximizer. I am a fan of a glossy lip over a matte lip, as you can see. And then this has become a, one of my top lipstick formulas. It's by Bobbi Brown. It's the Lux Lip Color. They're a bit more pricey than the regular lipsticks of Bobbi Brown. Um, but this shade, number three, in Almost Bare, it's what I have on right now. Almost every day it's what I have on. This is how it looks. Um, what shade, how would I describe this? It's like a peach beige. And I just love it. To me, it's the perfect nude. And then for the standout red, hands down, hands down. And I think this is the best red of all red mattes. Because of the formula as well, the matte is non-drying, very comfortable to wear, very long wear. More than any that I've tried and universally flattering this red shade on everyone. This is Dior's iconic shade in 999. Um, it looks so bright with my light, but this one is not such a cool tone blue-red, but it's more like a bright orange red. It looks orange in some lights, but honestly you guys, it looks good on every skin tone and it's a red that you can wear during the day so that says a lot because a lot of other reds is a nighttime or a date night red this is a day or a nighttime red special mention outstanding lip topper 
quite trendy. I don't think I, it'll replace lip maximizer for me, but definitely for a night out or you want something more extra, the KKW Beauty um, Ultra Light Beams Lip Glosses. Um, these to me are toppers, lip toppers, and definitely they are more luxury or prestige than like the, I have some, I think it's the Wet n Wild. Wet n Wild NYC lip toppers, which are like a dollar or so. Um, also beautiful. I mean, lip toppers, you don't really need to spend so much, but this is the prestige version of that. These are gorgeous. I did put some of the bronze in the center of my lip. Mm. It's beautiful. If you want something that is more va va voom than the Lip Max or you want more effect, then this is an outstanding beauty release from 2017. Of course, I just looked down and did forget something, and this I really, really have to mention. This falls under the category of eye palettes outstanding. Um, one of them I reached for almost on a daily basis. These are, I don't know what, the Smashbox, Smashbox Cover Shot Palettes, and I already have two. I came across this, and these are only 35 Canadian. The first one I came across was in the cosmetics, um, cosmetic store, the outlet in the outlets and um, this one is matte eye palette and it just caught my attention and it was only 20 something and I love the shade range and you know what this one I used as a base to contour my my the, my crease area and then just to add on my other palettes so I would use this on a daily basis and then this one I just recently purchased and love as well it is just so cute this is these are great for traveling this is the um, metallic eye palette cover shot palette and this is how it looks so just good accents to the matte eye palette but uh, this is a medium range brand but honestly for the price and the quality these are outstanding um, eye palettes for makeup tools there are a few that I do want to mention of course I'm not going to mention the beauty blender because that's understood but for this year I mean these are the ones that stood out for me Particularly this one because I just introduced it a few months ago, but definitely changed Well, that didn't change my life like the beauty blender, but made its way instantly to my most reach for a complexion product This is the Ortiz brush and I forget what number the the elite oval number seven. This is how it looks um, this is like a match of a Buffing brush and the beauty blender in one. It's like you just it's like a toothbrush. I don't know. It's very dense but it just minimizes my makeup or complexion foundation application to half and the finish is gorgeous I still use my beauty blender though um, moist to just buff it buff my complexion products in but my initial to blend my foundation this has been the one Japanese brushes um, these are some of them I still have some but I don't have time to look for them my blush brush this is by Kanibo and this is just their blush brush. Uh, sorry, Lunasol by Kanibo. Um, I got this in Asia. I like the shape. I do have my SuQ, which I love as well. But the SuQ, where's my SuQ brush? This is my SuQ blush brush. It's good for the apples of my cheeks. But this one is so good even to contour almost everything. So I just reach for this. And I like, it's a bit wider than the SuQ, a little bit more dense. Um, then the Suku, not as soft of course, but this is what I've been reaching really stood out for me this year um, And then my Hakuhoto brushes My best most favorite eye brushes. I don't know the numbers anymore. These are all natural squirrel hair or Rabbit hair. I'm not sure but Japanese brushes definitely stand out for me this year So I think I'm gonna end this video on that note I hope I have not forgotten anything, but I'm pretty sure I have, um, and I'll find it somewhere. I'm going to be back for my skincare, most outstanding skincare roundup of 2017. I hope you guys found this video interesting and informative. I hope you guys have a great day or a great evening. <music>